Hi, this is Meng Han. I'm a gRPC maintainer. In this talk, I will talk about gRPC and service mesh and the service mesh support within gRPC. So first of all, what is gRPC? I think many of you must have known this, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. In short, gRPC is an RPC framework that is good to use for building microservices. But in practice, for microservices, you will need more than just the RPC framework. For example, before you can send RPCs, you will need to find the new services. While sending RPCs, you will care about load balancing and security. Before service mesh support is added into gRPC, gRPC provides limited support for those problems. That's when DNS resolver, there are two very simple pick first and run robin balancers. TLS, TLS is also supported in gRPC, but it's only configurable at startup time. For observability, there's no building, but there's an open sensors plugin. Of course, you can write your own plugins to get those advanced features that you will need, but writing and maintaining plugins can be a lot of work. So because of those problems, there's a need to integrate gRPC with service mesh. Let's take a look at how service mesh solves those problems. So service mesh is an extra infrastructure layer added to the deployment to control how different parts of the system interact with each other. There will be one service mesh control plan that is, uh, that is responsible for all the configurations. The service mesh part of like the service mesh part deployed with the plugin will get the configuration from the control plan and then it will decide where the traffic should go and they also do all the other features like security and observability. So in this more concrete example, uh, this is how typically service mesh is deployed. The, the application, the gRPC application will be deployed with a sidecar proxy. The sidecar proxy gets the configuration from the control plan and there will be one connection between the gRPC application and the proxy. So all the traffic will be sent to the proxy first. The proxy then, based on the configuration it got from the control plan, decide where the traffic should go. Uh, one thing you can see in this model is that much of the sophistication within the gRPC is not being used. For example, there's only, only one connection between the application and the proxy, so the connection management feature within gRPC is not being used. There are some other potential problems caused by the proxy. One of them is performance. So there will be one proxy on the client side and one on the server side. This can add overhead, this can uh, add latency, right? And also, also proxy could become the bottleneck of the system if your applications are fast enough. Another problem is that the proxies are standalone binaries that need, to that need to be deployed along with the application. So this means you also need to manage the life cycle of the proxies. You will need to deploy them, to upgrade them, and also to, to health check them. A third problem is you will not have end-to-end -end security because the proxies in between need to, inter need to intercept the traffic. And end-to-end -end security could be important in some situations. So because of those problems, we were thinking if we can add service mesh support into gRPC so we don't need those proxies. And this leads to a proxy-less gRPC service mesh. In this deployment, it's very similar to the proxy-based deployment the only difference is that there's no proxy in between. So the gRPC service will talk to the control plan directly to get the configuration. And also the gRPC service will talk to each other directly without going through proxies. And the module we added into gRPC can understand the, config the configuration from the, the control plan so it will do all the features that was uh, done by the proxy. There's actually one more thing to decide before we can move on. Uh, in the proxy-based model, you can pick the proxy and the control plan in pair. But this will be a native support of, uh, of service mesh within gRPC, so we actually need to decide which service mesh to support. And, and as always, what matters most is not the implementation, it's the API. And this is the API between the application and the control plan where the configuration is exchanged. So we want to pick an open and popular API that has very strong community support so there will be multiple implementations to choose from. This will help, this will also help prevent, prevent vendor locking. 
And eventually, the APIs we pick is XDS. XDS APIs were developed for uh, Envoy, and Envoy is used by many popular service mesh implementations as the proxy. So this makes XDS the de facto standard for uh, data plane APIs for service mesh. This is an overview of the XDS APIs. I'm not, I'm not going to get into many details of those, the, the, the protocol, but I want to give an overview because it helps understand the demo at the end. From bottom up, the first thing is endpoint. Endpoint is a server, a server instance. It contains the server address and also whether the server is healthy. Above locality, above endpoint is the locality. Locality is a group of endpoints. You can understand it as a zone. And a special thing that locality can do is priority. So let's say we give this locality P0 and this is P1. The, the, lower, priority, the lower priority locality is only used when the higher priority is not healthy. And we'll have a demo to show this at the end. Above locality is cluster. A cluster, you can see it as a deployment. And by deployment, it can be, you can have deployments for different services. You can, even, you can also have deployments for different versions of the same service. So this can be helpful if you have two versions of the same service and you are migrating from one to the other. Also, cluster is where load balancing is configured. So this blue box will contain how do to load balancing between localities and, and even for the endpoints within locality. Uh, about locality is the route, is the route, routes. So this is where request routing is happening. This is where you will do path matching, header matching. You can send specific traffic to certain cluster or even you can do uh, traffic splitting between two clusters. And this is also where timeout, retry, and other kind of uh, uh, features for the for for a certain route is configured. Above route is the listener and virtual IP. So this is the part that makes more sense from a proxy's point of view because as a proxy, all the traffic comes from a listener from a virtual IP, and uh, this is where the configuration uh, for this for the for all the traffic from this listener is configured. But uh, this doesn't uh, doesn't apply very well in in gRPC, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, many of the XDS features are already available inside gRPC, and to enable those uh, features, you have to do three things. The first thing is to pull in the XDS dependency. XDS dependency is not part of the gRPC core because we don't want to have uh, unnecessary code for those people not needing XDS. So you all have to explicitly add the dependency. The second thing is you all have to change the, the resolver scheme to XDS. This tells the gRPC client to use the XDS resolver and resolver will then trigger all the other components like the load balancers for XDS. A third thing is you all provide a bootstrap file. This file have the XDS server address in it and you can also specify other configurations, like you can set a node ID to, uh, to identify this client. Um, there are some limitations of the proxyless uh, so gRPC service mesh. The first thing is there's still a feature gap between what gRPC can do and what the proxies like Envoy can do. Uh, the XDS API is a very rich set of services and we are still actively, actively working on adding those missing features. A second uh, thing is that you will still need to deploy a bootstrap file with the application, but comparing to deploying a proxy, this should be much simpler. Next is that there is a big ecosystem around Envoy, especially regarding to observability. Uh, but fortunately, many of those uh, plugins are also available as gRPC interceptors and open sense and, and stats handlers like open sensors. And also we are actively working on observability uh, supporting XDS. The last thing is that you will need to recompile recompile the applications because as, as I said, you will need to explicitly add the XDS dependency. But this should not be a problem if you, if you already have a CI CD system. And another thing I want to say is that uh, you don't need to mig migrate all your applications to proxy, le proxy less at once. 
Even within the same application, you can have you can set different resolver schemes for different gRPC channels. So the the channels using XDS resolver will use the XDS modules within gRPC, and those use let's say use DS resolver will still go through the proxy if you configure it that way. So it is pretty easy to set up a mix and match proxy and proxy less deployment. And also another thing I want to say is that the goal of proxyless gRPC service mesh is not to put the uh, proxies like Envoy out of business. It's more like to provide an alternative to coexist with the proxies. If you have non-gRPC applications, you will for sure still use the, the proxies. And even for gRPC applications, in some situations, it might make more sense to go through a proxy. So as of October in gRPC release 1.33, our XDS client already supports the four main XDS services and also we support load reporting via LRS. Note that this means uh, this includes XDS version v2 and v3. In terms of features, we support the load balancing uh, within localities and the balancing for localities. We also recently added support for uh, path matching, header matching, and traffic splitting. So those are the things that we are actually working on. We're working on timeout, circuit breaking, fault injection. We're also working on adding XDS support on the server side. Two other big features are security and observability. You can watch the progress on GitHub. You're also, you're also very welcome to contribute. This is a list of resources that put together. I included the gRPC design docs here in case some of you might be interested in how the XDS implementation is done within gRPC. So that's enough of talking and we'll do a demo to show how this works in practice. In this demo, I will use gRPC wallet. This is an example implementation we created to show all the features and for the control plan, I will use Traffic Director. This is Google's Managed Service Mesh Control Plan. And uh, I'm not going to show you exactly how the configuration for the control plan looks like. I will more to show you the, set, the service setup and, that, that, and then show you what the client can do. So some context for the gRPC wallet application. So gRPC wallet is a wallet for a special coin called gRPC coin. We will have Three services here, the account service, this is where the user information is stored. The stat service, this is where the price for gRPC coin is reported. And the wallet service, this is where the, the number of gRPC coins for each user is stored. So the client can make a price call to the stat service, like the green arrows. So the client will send the user information with the RPC. Then the stat service will verify with the account service for the information and then based on the, re the response, it will send the price back to the client. The client can also talk to the wallet service to get a balance for a user. Sam uh, similar to the, uh, the price call, the client will also send the user information and the wallet service will verify with the account service and, all, and then the, the wallet service will send an RPC to the stat service to get a price. So, Based on those two responses, the wallet service will send the balance response with number of GFC coins and the total worth of the GFC coin to the client. The first demo we're going to show is traffic splitting. So in this demo, the client will talk to the wallet service to get the balance. And we will create two deployments of the wallet service, V1 and V2. Imagine that you are migrating from V1 to V2 and before you, before you are confident that V2 is, is stable enough, you want to split traffic between V1 and V2. So we config the RPC fetch balance to send 60% of the traffic to V1 and 40% to V2. And, and uh, uh, as the V2, the V2 service is getting stable and stable, you can gradually increase traffic to V2. So, so this is our wallet client here, and we're going to run this command to tell the client the client to to talk to the wallet service to get the balance and note that we set the XTS scheme uh, resolver scheme here to to use the XTS resolver and also we tell it to make the unary RPCs in a for loop so we can see the 
the different responses from different backends. If we run that, we'll see those responses from V1. And there's one from V2. So you, you will see that the distribution is not exactly 60% and 40%, but you will see that there are more traffic from V2 than from V1 than V2 because the algorithm we used here yeah, is not it's random based weighted round robin, so it's not exactly the conflicting you said. But you can but there's definitely more traffic from V1 than V2. Okay, so the next demo is header matching. In this demo, we'll use the client to talk to the stats service to get the price. And we have we also have two deployments of the stats service, the stats service for normal users and the stats service for only for premium users. The premium users get the price update with a higher frequency. Uh, the client who will send the info, user information with the RPC, it also include whether this user is a premium user or not. And then based on the header, we will route the premium requests to only the the stats premium service. So, so run this command. So run this command to tell to tell the client to talk to the stats service to get the price. And also we still set the XTS resolver scheme. And we are using Bob as the user in this command. Bob is a normal user. So if we run that, we can see this the response comes comes back from uh, the stats service. If we run it again, it should still come from the stats service, but a different backend. So if we change this to uh, user Alice, we'll see that response is from a stats premium uh, cluster, and and then also the updates is more much more frequency frequent. So uh, that's header matching. And the third demo we're going to show is failover. In fa failover is the priority feature of localities I, just, I talked about in the uh, XCS overview, overview side. In this demo, we're going to run the client in US Central and we're going to start uh, multiple services, some of them in US Central, some of them in US West. Uh, the, the logic here is if the client and the server are in the same zone, the, the server from the same zone will have the higher priority. So US Central servers will have priority 0 and US West servers will have priority 1. What we want to see is that all the traffic will go to US Central at first. So none of the US West servers should receive any traffic. And then we're going to turn down the servers from US Central and then the traffic will go to US West. And uh, so this is the setup I so this is the wallet client, and this is the server from US Central. This is also US Central. This is US West. This is US West as well. So if we run this command, tell the, tell it to talk to the stats service to get priced, and also run the Unity RPC in a for loop. We'll see both the US Central servers are getting traffic, but the US West servers are getting nothing. So if we kill one of the US central servers, you will see the, the, the other US central server is still getting all the traffic, but the US West are getting nothing. So if we kill this one as well, we'll see that the US West servers are getting the traffic now. And this failover happens fast because the US West servers already sent to, like, to the client, they are just a lower priority. So now if we restart the US central servers, the traffic should go back to the US Central in a minute. And this is slow because the control plan need to do health check of those servers. And the traffic will only go there when those, server, when those servers are healthy. So you can see one of the US Central servers already recovered and the other one is taking a little bit long. And, and now and now the traffic are uh, all recovered from for the US Central service and also it's doing run robin between those two servers. Okay. Um, all right. With with that, that's the uh, end of this presentation. So if you have any questions, you can find me, and also you can find the GRPC team here. 
And uh, if you have any questions, let me know and uh, 